Hi, I'm the director for Common Knowledge Trust, and I, I've actually had a bit of a dilemma whether I should stop today and not do any more broadcasts until after the new year. But there are women who are pregnant now, and they're going to give birth between now and the next two weeks. So I may or may not do any more talks. Um, my family's coming tomorrow, and they'll be here for a precious 10 days, so hard to say. But today I want to talk about the first part of debunking the myth about natural birth. I know to many people that I just sound like I am critical of natural births or midwives or home births or unassisted births or BBACs or any of that. That's actually not accurate. Birthing better and what I represent through our trust common knowledge, we support all births because the skills were developed by mothers and fathers for their baby's birth. And that was always our focus. Every family is focused on their birth. And by far the vast majority of women want to feel that they're in control of something. And they find themselves face to face with the truth, which is there's no way to know what your birth's gonna be like. That's unfortunately followed by an inaccuracy it says, therefore, there's nothing you can really do to prepare for it. And that's what birthing better families did, which was unique, was to say, well, that sentence makes us feel that we totally lack control. And even though when the skills developed, there were no choices and there were no birth plans, even when birth plans came into effect in, in the early 1980s or the late 1970s, it became really apparent that we didn't have much control over our birth plans either, that we couldn't actually plan or pick and choose what we wanted and didn't want at a birth. So when I gave birth in 1970, it became really apparent to me in my experience with giving birth that there were some myths that were already perpetrated by women to women. And I took Lamaze classes. I couldn't breathe. <laughs> for hours. I was taught by a woman. Yes, it was developed by a male obstetrician. He was doing his best, but there wasn't a breathing pattern that could work well over time for a lot of us. The idea that you put your chin to your chest and push. The idea that moving from a line on your back with feet up in stirrups to sitting down was better. Well, what we discovered as families was that even though lying on your back wasn't very good because it was anti-gravity, the fact was that we could feel that our pelvis was very open, whereas when we sat back, we could feel that we compressed our sacrum. And so most of us were lifting off, which then tightened our muscles back down there, or we were lifting to one side. So these were myths already. Kegel exercises, it never made any sense to me as just as an ordinary person who doesn't have any particular interest in, in birth or the politics of birth. Why should we be tightening up inside to let this big object out? It just made no sense. And so as these skills developed, it became apparent that we were going down a path based on the information we were giving each other. And that information was, were myths, inaccuracies. And they why? Because we hadn't seen ourselves as a universal human being. We were culturally dependent, religiously dependent, family dependent, all sorts of dependencies that we viewed the world through. And that meant that we saw ourselves as other from everybody else. But it's changed, right? We have the internet of things. We all know, now know we are one humanity. We still are culturally dependent, religiously dependent, opinionally dependent, but pregnancy is a universal thing. It's a shared human quality. So when we want to debunk the myth about natural birth, we have to start with what does the word natural mean? And, and this is where my having spent a lot of time in third world countries, very diverse cultures, very diverse religions. When there is no medical care, natural and normal is anything. 
good or bad, right? It, it normally occurs. It doesn't mean it's frequent. It just does occur. It's natural that it occurs. It may not be pleasant. It may be challenging. It may be very sad or maybe happy, maybe easy. It doesn't matter, right? Birth naturally and normally follows pregnancy. It's rare for women to be pregnant for a whole year. I once saw an article about a woman who had a mummified fetus, almost full-grown fetus taken out of her 50 years later. I mean, that's hen's teeth. So normal pregnancy and birth are normal life events. However, they can be full of naturally occurring disorders, problems, mental attitudes. So the natural birth movement co-opted a word because if we think about it, oh, the natural birth movement, I gave birth naturally. What does that imply to people? It meant that it was fairly easy, easy to cope with, reasonable, good outcome, highlight, everybody had a great time, no probs, resolved great. That, that's what we think. And so women pit each other against each other. I had a natural birth, you had a cesarean, or their children. She was my home birth, he was my cesarean. And we have to stop this. It, it's as simple as that, we have to stop doing this. The birth of our child, everybody's child, is equally as important, equally valid, and can equally be positive when we understand that all of us that are pregnant are naturally and normally going to give birth. And it is normal and natural to have hormones that are preparing our body and mind to birth our baby, even though our mind knows we may be having a non-laboring cesarean, even though our body knows that we may have come into pregnancy with asthma or with diabetes or being obese or having a drinking problem or being abused or having been sexually abused or having had a broken pelvis or having, I don't know, name it. <laughs> right? So it is normal and natural for all of us to have one or more disorders coming into pregnancy. Even a disorder can be for a really healthy woman. She has a really tight or small pelvis, right? She may not know it, right? So what happens when we use the word natural birth is we imply that it is easy to do. And I want to tell you from having talked to hundreds and thousands of women around the world, women who give birth easily don't understand why women don't give birth easily. And women who don't give birth easily don't understand how women can give birth easily. Women who give birth easily sometimes think it's because of something they did. And women who had difficulty often believe it's something that they did or that somebody did to them. So when we're talking about natural birth, every birth is natural, even if you're gonna have a non-laboring cesarean, because birth naturally and normally follows pregnancy. We can naturally and normally develop issues during pregnancy, and so can our baby. Some of those are life-threatening. The majority of them are not, but we have to deal with those things. That's true if we labor. There are things that arise during labor to our baby ourselves. They're normal and natural. If you have a cesarean, is that a normal birth? It's the birth of your baby, come on. It's that birth that is moving you from becoming to being a mother or a father. Do we want births for our humanity to all be surgical births? I don't know, not my opinion. What I do know is if you are gonna have a non-laboring cesarean, enjoy preparing your body to birth your baby because your hormones are revving you up to give birth normally and naturally or labor and vaginal birth. You're not gonna be pregnant often. I've said it again and again, I'll say it again and again. And then use your skills when you think your baby's birth is starting, which is usually on the way to the hospital. 
and you have anxieties and excitements and fears, just like women who are in, going into labor. And then you have at the transition of being prepped. And then you're lying on the table, often feeling numb from the waist down. But that doesn't mean your brain can't engage with the skills you have or your partner can't engage with the skills you have. You are normally and naturally engaging in the birth of your baby, even though it's a surgical birth. If you labor and have a labor at home, that doesn't guarantee you won't have problems or that you won't transfer. It's normal and natural for people birthing at home to have problems that can be resolved at home or can't be resolved at home. Think about the global community. For you who were around when there was the tsunami in Indonesia, do you think those women stopped birthing? Do you think they stopped birthing over the years of war in Iraq or in Afghanistan or in Syria or Yemen now or in the droughts in Africa? We are one humanity. If you are faced with a natural and normal event, which is life, then you want to be as skilled as possible to cope and deal with what's happening. It can be pleasurable, and that's normal and natural. You still want skills to deal with it. I mean, think about sex. Sex is normal and natural. We get urges. We're randy. Do you want to just go bonk? Or do you want to put some skills and attention to what you're doing? It is natural and normal to just go bonk. And sometimes it's fun, right? But a lot of times it isn't as much fun as when we really are skilled and learn skills to enhance this natural and normal urge to have sex. When we get hungry, that's natural and normal. It's physiological. But for all of you who cook, and I'm not a great cook, it's a pleasure to have learned skills to really heighten and enliven the pleasure of food through cooking a good meal. That's also natural and normal. The skills don't come naturally to us. We have to learn them. But when you think of our humanity, do you like being unskilled? Most of us don't, and most of us know when we're not skilled. And it's natural and normal to also lack skills. There are some skills that we repeat over and over again. If we have children, you see children learn to crawl, learn to stand, learn to walk. That is an urge to accomplish those human capabilities. But that child actually has to choose when they fall down to get up again. And we have all seen our children periodically go, yeah, can't be shagged and just crawl, right? They fall and they don't get up again. They have to choose to get up again. They have to choose to perfect their skill. And while we're at it, we're gonna talk about it's perfect. When women who have birthed beautifully and easily, they just, they, you, and we can't sit there and say to them, well, you don't have the right to feel great. You do have the right to feel great. We wish we all had your births, okay? But you can feel great no matter how you give birth because that's what's empowering is that you actually have accomplished it and that you're now a parent. One of the things that I've learned over the years is that around the world, there is very, very little focus on birth per se as an experience of highlighting. That is really very focused in the natural birth movement. The birth is the highlight experience. The birth is orgasmic. But around the world, people see the birth as the transforming of you from becoming to being a mother or a father. Their focus is on having the baby and they get through the birth. The natural birth movement focused on your birth as, as the wedding, sort of the highlight. And I've talked about this before, and I'll talk about it again, because it needs repeating over and over again. Your birth is a big event, and the best way to do it is with you being skilled. Every moment, every moment you can breathe in and choose to open up, and every moment you can breathe out and soften inside your pelvis. This is not a natural instinct. 
it is a choice based on learned skills. You do not have to be perfect. You can perfect it at each time. I'll give you a story of a woman who, she didn't really want to learn any skills. She was having a baby late in life. She got pregnant. Her opinion of pain was, just give me an epidural right away. That's it. She was willing to learn the breathing skills. That was it. She wasn't learn, willing to learn any of the other birthing better skills. We don't care. It's her baby's birth. It's her choice. So she learned the breathing skills, and her husband did as well. So this is the story she told me after the birth. She said, you know, I really went into the birth thinking as soon as I had my first labor pain, I was going to have an epidural. But they weren't too bad. You know, so I had contractions. They weren't too bad. And I, you know, used the breathing. I really thought about breathing in and opening up, breathing out and softening. And she had a peak of the five phases of contractions because I had talked to her and her husband. So she said, yeah, the contractions would start in that first breath cycle. I would breathe in and open up and I would breathe out and soften. And that wasn't so bad for a while. I went three or four hours having contractions every three to five minutes. And that was fine. I was doing fine. And I breathed through the contractions. Then the contractions got really intense. And I found at the beginning of the contraction, I could breathe in and open up. And I could breathe out and soften inside my pelvis. And she said, that wasn't so bad. But I found myself moaning for the rest of the contraction. And then she said, then the contractions really picked up. And they got really, really intense. And beginning of the contraction, I could breathe in, feel myself expand and open up in my pelvis and breathe out and soften inside my pelvis. And they screamed the rest of the contraction. And then eventually I had the epidural. So that's a story this woman told. But what did people see who were present? Well, at first they saw a woman they thought was coping, right? A lot of women cope when the pain isn't too intense. Then they saw a woman who wasn't coping as well. A lot of women without skills don't cope as well. But this woman always had this expansion at the beginning. It's the first phase of contraction and softening on the inside, even though she moaned. What did they see next? They saw a woman out of control. She was screaming. But that woman didn't see herself out of control. Even in the intense contractions, at the beginning of the contraction, phase one, she would choose to breathe in and expand and choose to soften inside her pelvis at each exhale. She felt in control. That is not a perfect birth. We've had people say, well, she didn't use the birthing better skills. Yes, she did. <laughs> she did. She used them. And what she said after the birth was, I am going to have another baby and I'll use the skills more deeply. Of course she will, because she realized she could make that choice. She might still have an epidural. That's not our business. It's not your business. Is she still having a natural and normal birth? Oh, you bet she is. She's engaged. She's even used the skills while she had the epidural, even though she felt really sleepy. She just mentally just breathed in and opened up and breathed out and softened. The pain was gone, but she kept using the skills. She wasn't passive. She stayed in control. She perfected the use of her learned skills. That's what we want for you. For the month of December 2017, we are offering a 50% reduction on all our courses, the comprehensive skills, the skills specific for VBAC, and we broke up the comprehensive course into three short courses, the body skills, the breath language and touch, and the soft skills that tie the others together. So there's a 50% discount, and even with a consultation from me, because I'm worth your time and energy. So where do we want on the bottom line to debunk this, the first myth about natural birth? You're all going to have a natural birth. Simple as that. You're all going to birth. You're pregnant. Birth is naturally and normally follows pregnancy. And we have to elevate the birth of every child to the exact same level because that's how important it is to each of our families. So maybe I'll talk again. Maybe I won't. Who knows? One day I'll figure out how to schedule. That was a blip. <laughs> See ya.